OpenSense 25.7.5 was released on the 8th of October 2025. In this video, I'm going to have a quick dive into the changes, the updates, including the OpenSSL security updates, and the fact that this time they've introduced ipinfo.io for GeoIP databases, pretty much replacing the MaxMind stuff. So we'll set that up as well. Let's dive right in. Sheridan Computers, IT, Communications, Support. OpenSense 25.7.5, updated on the 8th of October. So this update provides for a new GeoIP database source by IP Info. Not sure who they are. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, stability fixes for several network drivers and the recent OpenSSL security update amongst others. A full patch notes, let's just go over them quickly because there's not that many. Uh, so system patches, add the PFSync defer option for high availability, return both interfaces in a single call for get name servers, safeguard legacy local sync accounts against malformed user entries, uh, firewall updates, support the IP info format for GeoIP, so this update seems to be GeoIP orientated a lot. Adapt default table size calculation and fix flags not showing on GeoIP selection. For the captive purple, captive portal, uh, the case insensitive MAC parsing is now an option. Remove stale directory listing to activate from web server. DNS mask, refine the selection of automatic DHCP rules for illegible interfaces. Firmware, switch business mirror layout. Under IPsec, dots are not allowed in pool names. Kia DHCP, expose lease expiration settings to the GUI. And support for DHCP option 121, which is classless static routes. Under the user interface, protect JSON response against UFT-8 encoding failures. HTML decode select element values. So sanitization there. For your plugins, the uh, ET Pro Telemetry 1.8 now shows more status responses in the widget and OS Shadow Socks 1.3. I have no idea what that is. Is that two? Uh, two. Shadow Socks is a fast tunnel proxy that helps you bypass firewalls. And the changes are they've updated ciphers to match Shadow Socks Rust and update the web UI to allow settings for TCP and UDP fragmentation. So that's the updates for those. BNXT fixed the request length in BNXT HWRM Funk Backing Store config. I have no idea what that is. Uh, interface library set the get counter routine prior to attaching the interface. Uh, if net, defer detaching address family dependent data. This IXGBE fix is the first one of the network driver updates. So fix incomplete speed coverage in link status logging. IXL, another network driver update. Fix QMSI and legacy IRQ rearming. Open SSL, fix multiple vulnerabilities. Let's take a look at them in a second, because I'm not sure what they are myself. RE, add PMP info module, and make sure RE RX EOF is called in net epoch context. VFS, fix copy file range, failing to set output parameters. And then we've got ports that have been updated, so curl, expat, NSS, open SSL, the pgre2 library and php sec library let's just dive in and take a quick look at these uh, open ssl issues where is it three multiple vulnerabilities in open ssl all supported versions of freebsd so 15 14 and 13. we've got cve 2025 9230 9231 and 9232. so the cve 2025 9230 is a moderate severity vulnerability discovered in open ssl cms message description functionality it's got 7.5 cvss the vulnerability occurs when an application attempts to decrypt cms messages encrypted using password-based encryption the issue stems from an incorrect check of unwrapped key size in the uh, one of the functions where the check is off by eight bytes. This can trigger an out-of-bounds read-write operations. The vulnerability has been signed a CVSS 3.1 base score of 7.5, which is high. 2025-9231, 9231, 
is described as moderate severity of vulnerability discovered in uh, SM2 algorithm implementation on 64-bit ARM platforms. Uh, that's got a 6.5 score. The vulnerability exists as a time inside channel in SM2 signature computations. Uh, while remote key recovery over a network is not demonstrated by the reporter, timing measurements reveal that a timing signal that could potentially enable such an attack. CV2025-9232 is an out-of-bounds read vulnerability discovered in OpenSSL's HTTP client API functions, also disclosed on September the 30th. So this one has medium severity of a 5.9 CVSS score. The vulnerability occurs when the OpenSSL HTTP client API processes IPv6 addresses in the host portion of HTTP URLs while the no proxy environment variable is set. This issue stems from missing terminating null byte after a string copy call in the HTTP client implementation, again leading to an out-of-bounds read condition, and it's been signed 5.9. And the impact uh, can trigger a cache leading to denial of service condition for affected applications. The impact is considered low because the vulnerability requires specific conditions and attacker controlled URL must be passed from an application to the open SSL function. Either way, we're going to want to make sure that we're patched. Okay, while we're here, we might as well have a look at this uh, GOIP database source and how to set it up. If we scroll down to the bottom, the instructions are here. Um, so we need to create an account. So let's head over and create an account. Okay, I've created the account. I've logged in. So then we need to head to data download. Uh, and as mentioned in the instructions, um, we need to select the CSV here, and then we can just copy that link. Now, if we head back into OpenSense, um, we need to go into Firewall, Aliases. And when you're in your aliases, we need to go into GOIP settings. Then where this URL is here, this is where we paste it in. So I just paste that URL in. And it's got your token on the end of it. Click Apply. And that is it. That's pretty much done. So now to set that up, we can add a new alias. You can choose a type as GOIP. Um, now, if I just select, I'll just select any of these, for example, uh, Atlantic, I save that. And I'll just put test in here. And then we'll be able to refer to that in our aliases. This will take a minute, I think, while it downloads. And so we have our GOIP range here, and we can refer to that in any firewall wheels that we wish. Um, and then just to check, you see last updated, Total number of ranges, uh, and then your URL if you need to change it. Obviously, you can click on full help if you need be over here. So that's a brief overview of what is available in 25.7.5. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. It does uh, help YouTube and it does help others find the video. If you're interested in watching uh, OpenSense videos, please subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more coming. I'll see you in the next video.